Hi everyone, my name is Jared and today I'm going to do a video on how to properly assemble the Air Access 18 package with AOSC to make it operable and I'm also going to give a general overview of the functionality of Air Access 18. Uh, this project has been designed for the blind and the visually impaired to be able to operate the Behringer X Air X18 and XR18 digital stage box mixers. For the purposes of this video, I am using an XR18, and this project is only designed with Windows in mind. My operating system is Windows 11, and I am using non visual desktop access, otherwise known as NVDA. However, Microsoft Narrator will work with this as well. There is no JAWS access right now, but I'm sure that any good JAWS user can probably write a script to make it work because of the sliders. Um, otherwise, let's go ahead and get started with this. You will need two packages, both AOSC and Air Access 18 zip files. I have them both on my desktop, and I will provide you links for them in the description. So let's go ahead and get started. Now on my desktop, I have AOSC. SAS20R0B511911. Which is that file right there, so I'm going to extract it. Kindle 10 of 12. And then I'm going to look for Air Access 18. Air Access 18 v1.011 of 12. Context menu. Desktop list. Air Access 18 v1.011 of 12. Jared Duke. Air Access 18 v1.011 of 13. Air Access 18 v1.09 of 13. Okay, this is File Explorer. Easy. Air Access 18 v1. Selected. And what you're going to want to do. Air Access 18 1 of 1. Is you're going to open this folder. Items view list. Isaiah's not selected 1 of 5. And you're going to copy all five of these files. Eula 2 of 5. Including the license agreement and the README. You're going to just copy them all and you're going to list. put them in 18. the same folder that you previously extracted with Isaiah's 1.0 or 2.0, excuse me. Isaiah's 20R0B5110 of 13. So you're going to look for this file. File Explorer, Isaiah's 20R0B51. Items view list, Isaiah's not selected one of three. And you're going to see there's three files in here. AZAOSC, license two of three. a license file, preset three of three. and a preset file. So what you're going to do is just simply paste those five files in this folder. EULA 4 of 8. And now Eula you will have a eight. total of five files in this folder. Please be sure and read the license, the end user license agreement, and the README files that are included in both packages before using this project. It will help you better understand everything and what's going on. Isaiah's two of eight. Isaiah's one of eight. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to open up AZAOSC, which is going to be an EXE file. There's no installation required. It's just you open it, and the first thing you're going to get when you open it, since this is a brand new setup, is AZAOSC is going to look for your XAIR mixer. Now, before you start this program, before I forget... You want to make sure that your X Air is connected to your Wi Fi or directly connected to a router or directly connected to your computer via Ethernet cable. In my case, it's directly connected with an Ethernet cable. So, when we're going to start AZAOSC, and the first thing you're going to get is it's going to tell you it's not ready, but then a dialog box is going to pop up. So, here we go AZAOSC, not enabled. AZAOSC dialog found device at 169.254.124.188. Connect to it. Yes button Alt plus Y. It found my X Air immediately. So we're going to connect to it by hitting the yes button. AZOSC active. One peers. And you're ready to go. That is the installation and setup process. Now we are going to go over some of the infrastructure and functionality of this. The infrastructure is a folder tree or page tree, and there are eight main sections. You have your navigator tree view, level zero main output expanded one of eight. Main output. Collapsed. Channel strips collapsed two of eight level zero. Channel strips. FX returns collapsed three of eight level zero. FX returns. Bus sends collapsed four of eight level zero. Bus sends. FX sends collapsed five of eight level zero. FX sends. DCA groups collapsed six of eight level zero. DCA groups. Routing collapsed seven of eight level zero. Routing. Configure collapse state of eight level zero. And configuration. Main output collapse. So to operate and navigate this, you will simply use the arrow keys, page up, page down, home, and in. You will also be using your tab, shift tab, spacebar, and inner keys when applicable. 
and I will do my best to give a description of how to use them as we need them and for what function and controls. So we're on the main outputs and now I'm going to hit the tab key and it's going to take me into the main output parameters page. So let's check it out. Main output grouping. Strip color combo box deal collapsed. First thing you're going to come to is a strip color and it's going to be like this for pretty much anything you can change a strip color on. And this color here is not affected by AZOSC. It is just specifically more designed for anybody who is visually with you and you can group instruments or drums and color groups and there are several color groups to choose from as you can see by default this is teal and this is a freshly reset mixer by the way so there is no predetermined anything going on here so the colors you have are off, off red, red green green yellow yellow blue blue pink, pink teal teal white. white and then you have a second variation of each of those colors off two red two green two yellow two blue two pink two teal two what do? Teal. So I'm going to go back to teal, and I use the up and down arrows to navigate individually through the options. Now pushing page up off. takes you all the way to the bottom. Pushing page down what do? takes you all the way up to the top of the list. And then using the home and end takes you in 20% increments. Teal. Off. Red to what do? Teal. And in this case, depending on how many increments you have, it may not be quite that. But using faders, it takes you every 20%. Red, green, yellow, blue, pink, teal. So next up we have... Main output on checkbox checked. Main output on. Now when this is on or off, and this is for anything that this applies to, when it's on, that means it is unmuted. But if it's unchecked and it's off, it, that means it is muted. So I basically look at it like it is muted or unmuted. Because that's essentially what's going on there. Solo enable checkbox not checked. Now, solo enabled is just a checkbox that is only checked whenever something is soloed in this setup. Now, you can't turn it on or off by hitting any keys or buttons. It is completely not controllable. It is just there to let you know if something has or has not been soloed. Master fader slider infinity. Now, this is your master fader, which is self-explanatory. The faders are controlled by using the buttons in which I mentioned earlier, you know, you turn up the master fader all the way by hitting the page down. Plus 10 dB. And then all the way off Infinity. by page up. And then like I said, the 20 percent increments with the home and in keys, pushing home from the bottom from infinite just minus 38, minus 18 dB, minus 6 dB, plus 2 dB, plus 10 dB. And it's back up to full. Plus 2 dB. And then you can use the arrow keys and go by smaller increments. Plus 1.4, plus 1.4, plus 1.2, plus 1.2, plus 1 dB, plus 0, plus 0, point, plus 0 point 4 dB, plus 0 point 2 dB, plus 0 dB. Let's keep it at 0 decibels, which is unity or nominal. Okay, let's move on. Main output meter edit read only selected infinity. Now, this is your meter. This is going to be a very crucial tool to operating this thing because your meters will tell you if any of your signals are clipping. And um, by default, they go from infinity up to zero decibels. Zero, of course, being clipping. And uh, so you definitely want to keep an eye on that. And this is controlled with three options. Whenever your meter is highlighted, you can get check your current peak, you can check your maximum peak, or you can check your RMS rating. Escape key for RMS, space bar for maximum peak, and enter for current peak. And every time you hit escape or enter, your maximum peak level will reset. Master pan slider center. Your master pan is self-explanatory. You can go 100% left to 100% right using the same controls for the faders. Mute group one checkbox not check. You got four mute groups. Mute groups one. Mute group two checkbox. Mute group three checkbox. Mute group four checkbox not check. And all the way through mute groups four. And when these are checked, that means the channels, buses, and effects assigned to the mute group will be muted. If they're not checked, that means whatever's assigned to those are unmuted. Enable insert checkbox not checked. Enabling your insert means you can assign an insert to the strip, and this is for the master output, and it's for any other channel that allows you to enable an insert. Now, for the master output, you only get four options to which you can choose to pull from your insert. Insert source combo box off collapsed. So your source is basically, you got it off, which means you're not getting any kind of source. FX1, FX2, FX3, FX4. And FX1 through FX4. And these are combo boxes, which you can control by the same options. Enable compressor checkbox not checked. Your compressor can be enabled here by clicking this checkbox. Compressor threshold slider 0 dB. Your master compressor threshold, which is the only control that you get here on this particular page, can be adjusted here. 
Enable EQ checkbox checked. Your EQ can be enabled here as well for the master bus, which is your main outs. I call it your master bus generally, so don't get confused. And so you can check and uncheck the box to enable or turn off, you know, turn on or off the EQ. EQ mode combo box parametric collapsed. And you have three EQ modes for your master and your bus outputs, and you have parametric, graphic, graphic true. or true EQ. Now your parametric is a six-band parametric, and your graphic and your true EQs are both 31 bands, graphic or true EQs with sliders. Parametric. So I'm leave it for parametric. Automix X combo box off collapsed. Your auto mixes are your two auto mix channels that you have available to you. In this case, auto mix X, which is the off or on. Right now, it is turned off, on. but you can turn it on. Off. Lock auto mix X checkbox not checked. Your auto mix locking allows you to lock the auto mix in which is generated. Therefore, meaning that if anything happens elsewhere, your auto mix will not try to automatically mix it. It'll just keep locked to what it's currently set to. And the same will apply for auto mix Y, which is the next set of controls. Auto mix Y combo box off collapsed. Lock auto mix Y checkbox not checked. Active one peers. When you hear your screen reader say active one peers, that means you have rerouted all the way back around and you're fixing to come back to the navigation tree. You can also go back to the navigation tree by con holding control and pressing the number one on your keyboard. Navigator tree view. Main output collapsed one of eight level zero. And as you can see, the main output is collapsed, and which means I hit the right arrow key, it will expand it. Expanded three items. And it gives you uh, three sub pages that you can access, and the three sub pages are level one master mix one of three master mix master compressor two of three level one master compressor master EQ three of three level one and master EQ Ma master mix one of three level one. Now the master mix section is the main output faders for all the channels, effects returns and DCA group, as well as the master output fader. Master mix grouping. Master fader slider minus 0.01 dB. As you remember, we set that fader just earlier to pretty much nominal, but it always resets to minus 0.01, which I appreciate that. Main output meter edit read only selected. And there's your main output meter, and I put that here so that way you can always check your mix. And then you got your channels 1 through 16, auxiliary in. Channel 1, slider infinity. So channel 1. Channel 2, slider infinity. All the way up to 16. Auxiliary in, slider in. Channel 16, slider infinity. Auxiliary in, slider infinity. auxiliary in, which is channel 17 and 18, stereo pair. Your FX returns. FX return 1, slider. FX return 2, slider. FX return 3, slider. FX return 4, slider minus 0.01. And your four DCA groups. DCA 1, slider minus 0.0. DCA 2, slider minus 0.0. DCA 3, slider minus 0.0. DCA 4, slider minus 0.0. Active. One peers. And that's it. Navigator tree view. Master compressor 2 of 3, level 1. Now, this is a master compressor, and this compressor is for the main outputs. However, every channel and bus also has a compressor. And each of the compressors that you encounter in this particular situation is the same and has the exact same set of controls. Master EQ 3 of 3, level 1. The Master EQ is identical to the bus send EQs. And like I mentioned earlier, there are three types of EQs, parametric, graphic, and true. Now for the master output and the bus sends, the parametric EQ is six bands. However, for the channel strips, the parametric EQ is only four bands. And also the graphic and true EQs are only available for the master output and the bust sends. They are not available for the channel strips. This completes the master output section or the main output section of Air Access 18. Level zero main up collapsed. So let's collapse this and go into the channel strips. Channel strips collapsed two of eight level zero. Now on the channel strips main page, I have added all 17 of the channel strips main output faders. Channel strips grouping. Channel 1 slider infinity. All the way from channel 1 to auxiliary Channel 13 slider. Channel, channel, channel 16 slider. Auxiliary and slider infinity. And then it reroutes back to the active one peers. Navigator tree view. Channel strips collapse tree. to eight level zero. So let's expand this and there'll be 17 items. Expanded. 17 items. And each of these 17 items is for each of the channels. Level 1 channel 1 collapsed 1 of 17. Now, the channel main pages and the infrastructure for each of the channels is very similar to how I have the main output with some obvious differences in the controls. So let's check it out. Channel 1 grouping. Strip color combo box off collapsed. The strip color is the same. Strip name edit blank. And here you can edit the name for the channel. And anytime you name this channel, it will appear anywhere in the Air Access 18 
controls that will let you know that it is that particular channel. So anywhere you heard it say channel one fader, it will say whatever you assigned it to is fader. Let me give you an example. I'm going to name it vocals. vocals selected. So now I'm going to go back to the folder tree by using the control number one. Navigator tree view. Vocals collapsed one of 17 level one. So you can see it now says vocals instead of channel one. Level zero channel strips expanded. And if I go to the channel strips and check out the uh, channel strips faders. Channel strips grouping. Vocal slider infinity. So it now says vocals instead of channel one there as well. And the same applies anywhere you will hear this. Navigator tree view. Level one vocals collapsed one of 17. Anyways. Vocals grouping. Strip color combo box off collapsed. Strip name edit selected vocals. And um, a lot of the same controls are here too. So you're fixing the account. It's like I'll show you. Vocals on checkbox checked. The iron is the same as the master. You can see right now it's turned on. Not checked. Now it's off. Checked. Solo checkbox not checked. Your solo means that you can actually solo the channel and hear it through the headphones on the XR18 by itself. And checked. this is controllable because you're actually trying to turn it on and off. And as I mentioned, as you now see, the solo is actually enabled. If I go back to the main output, level zero main output collapsed. One of it expanded. Main main output on checkbox checked. Solo enabled checkbox checked. Now you see where it says solo enabled. The box is checked. Navigator tree view collapsed. Channel strip level one vocals collapsed. One vocals group strip name vocals on checkbox checked. Solo checkbox checked. Not checked. So we're going to solo that. Send to main checkbox checked. This is your send to main option, which allows you to send the strip to the main outputs. So if you're not wanting to send anything hook into that channel into the main app, but you just turn this box off. Vocals fader slider infinity. This is your fader for the vocal. It's pretty self-explanatory. Vocals output meter edit read only selected infinity. This is your output meter for this particular channel. So there will be a meter for each of the channels for you can see the level of the signal coming out of the channel strip before you send it to the mains. Pan slider center. This is your pan for the channel. It's a pan at left or right, respectively. Enable high pass filter checkbox not checked. This is your high pass filter, which allows you to cut off certain frequencies below the filter that you, the frequency in which you select. So whenever we have this checked, it's turned on. Check. And that's on. Not checked. Now it's off. High pass filter frequency slider 20 hertz. So now you have your high pass filter frequency control, and you have a minimum of 20 hertz and a maximum of 400 hertz. 400 hertz. And of course, 388, 307, 300, 300, 300, 300, and 20 hertz. All the way down to 20. Enable insert checkbox not checked. And here's the same thing as the main output, so you can enable an insert into the channel strip. Insert source combo box off collapse. And the insert sources here are a little bit different because you can choose between, you know, it being off, and you can choose the left or right of each of the four effects. FX1L, FX1R, FX2L, FX2R, FX3L, FX3R, FX4L, FX4R, off. Enable gate checkbox not checked. Now here you have a noise gate, and the noise gate is available to you on the 16 microphone line combination inputs. And so you enable it with the checkbox, and you turn it off without a checkbox being clicked. Gate threshold slider minus 80 dB. So the gate threshold is the same as the compressor threshold, but the difference is that the gate threshold is letting things through the lower it is. Enable compressor checkbox not checked. The compressor is the same as the main outputs. Compressor threshold slider 0 dB. Enable EQ checkbox check. The EQ is the same as the main outputs, but only these are a 4-band EQ and not a 6-band EQ. But what I did here is a little bit different, and this is applying to all the channel strips and effects return strips. And that is that whenever you go past the EQ enabling, you will see the 4 gain bands. So Band 1 gain slider 0 dB. Band 2 gain slider 0 dB. Band 3 gain slider 0 dB. Band four gain slider zero dB. And so there's the four bands of the EQs gains available to you rather quickly. Active one peers. And now we're going to route back around to the navigation tree. Navigator tree view. Vocals collapse one of seventeen level one. So we're going to expand the vocals channel, which is channel one. Expanded five items. Level two input one of five. And there is input. Gate two of five level two. Gate compressor three of five. Compressor level two. EQ four of five level EQ, two. Sense five of five level two. And your sends. There's a total of 10 sends. You have six bus sends and four effects sends. So let's check out the inputs. Input one of five, level two. So input is the same on all 16 of the channels and slightly different for the auxiliary. So I'll show you that when we get there. Input grouping. Input source combo box analog collapse. Now your input source is either choice between analog or USB. USB. Analog. And um, if you choose analog, then that means whatever you got connected to the assigned input 
will come through the channel strip. If you have it going through USB, whatever you have assigned to the USB will come to this channel strip instead. USB return source combo box USB 1 collapsed. And this is where you can assign what your USB return is. So you got a choice between USB 1, USB 18, all the way up to USB 18, USB 1, USB 2, USB 3, USB 4, USB 5, etc. USB 1, USB trim slider 0 dB. And this is a USB trim, so you can adjust how much more so to speak, gain you would need before you get a comfortable level with what's coming through the USB. So if it's too hot, you can back it off. If it's not hot enough, you can bring it up. Minus 18 dB. Negative 18. 18 dB. The positive 18. 11 dB. 10, 10, 9, 92 dB. 1, 1, 0, 0, minus 0, 0 dB. And it goes up from increments at half a decibel. 0 0.5 dB. 1 dB. 0 0.5, 0 dB. Minus 0 0.5, minus 1 dB. Minus 0, 0 0.5 dB. 0 dB. Vocals input pre fader meter edit read only selected minus Now, this is your pre fader meter for this channel, so you can obviously see what your signal is doing before it even makes it to the rest of the channel strip. So, this is a good thing so that way you can set your gains and you can make sure that your signal is not clipping. I actually have a microphone hooked up to channel one right now, so we can test this out and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. And let me show you the rest of these controls first. Gain slider zero dB. Now, here's your gain, which is going to be used whenever you are actually adjusting the gain for the input coming into the analog source that is assigned to this channel. And you go all the way from negative 12, minus 12 dB, all the way up to positive 60, 60 dB, 4, 30, 18 dB, 32 dB, 30, 30, 30, 30, 20, 20, 28 dB. I know I need it pretty hot, so I'm going to put it about 28 decibels. As a matter of fact, let's check it out, and I'll tell you this meter thing. Vocals input pre fader meter edit read only selected minus 71.9 dB. So you can see it says minus 71, but I'm going to grab the microphone real quick. And I'm going to... Minus 36.2 dB selected. Check one, two. Check one, two. Minus 6.76 dB selected instead. So it says minus 6.76 decibels, which is my maximum peak. Check. Minus 6.76 minus check, 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 dB check. selected instead. Minus 6.76 dB selected. Now, if I hit the enter key. Minus 6.76. Minus 32.8. Minus 11.7. Minus 10.7 dB selected. Check, check, minus 9.18 dB check, selected. Check. Minus 10.4 dB so selected. So it's giving me a more average or current peak. Minus 12.9 dB selected instead. Check one, two. Minus 5.71 dB. Minus 5.71 dB selected see, instead. See, that's always going to be the same. Minus 5.70. Minus 5.71 dB selected instead. And if I use the escape key. Minus 48.5 dB selected. Minus 13.2 dB check. Minus 8.41 dB selected. Check, check, check. Minus 22.1. Minus 78 points. Minus 67.8. Minus 71.3 dB selected. See, it's giving you your average rating. Check, one, two. Minus 29. Point, minus 33.8 dB. Minus 32.2 dB selected. Minus 29.4 dB selected. Minus 7.69 dB selected instead. So, as you can see, if I hit the space bar. Minus 7.69 dB selected. Minus 7.69 dB selected instead. That's my maximum peak. If I use the inner key. Minus 7.69 dB selected. Minus 12.5. Minus 15.3. Minus 17 dB. Minus 17.8 dB selected. Minus 16.4 dB selected. And then if I use the escape key, check, minus check, check, DB check, check, minus check, DB, check, minus check, 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 Analog source combo box analog 18 collapsed. Analog source combo box analog 18 analogs collapsed. to choose from your 16 mic line combinations and your two auxiliary ends. Analog source combo box analog one collapsed. Enable phantom power checkbox not checked. And you have your phantom power, which is available to you on the 16 inputs for analog, but is not available to you for the auxiliary, obviously. And this is turned on and off by checking the box. This is your 48 volt phantom, so condenser mics and active direct boxes can you operate on this particular setup. Polarity combo box normal collapsed. The polarity here is allowing you to invert the phasing of the inputs, therefore allowing you to connect the hot to the cold and vice versa if you have a mic that is wired in reverse or anything that is connected in reverse so the tip and the sleeve are pretty much backwards. Automix root combo box all collapsed. This is where you can choose what auto mix your channel is assigned to. In this case, you got it turned off, or you can choose between that, auto mix X, X auto mix y. or Y. Off. And as I mentioned earlier, the auto mixes are controlled in the main output section where you can turn them on or lock their controls or lock their adjustment. Auto mix priority slider 0 dB. Now, here's your auto mix priority. Now, this allows you to control how much leverage any particular channel may have coming into the auto mix section so like say to speak you got three vocals in auto mix or three voices in a panel discussion and you want voice one to be a little bit louder 
you would use this control and bump them up a little bit. 0.5 dB, 1 dB, 1, 2, 2, 3 dB. Respectively. 3.5 dB. To where they are slightly above the other two panel discussion members. So you can go up as high as. Minus 12 dB. You can go as low as negative 12. 12 dB. And as, as high up as 12. 7, 3 dB, 2, 2, 1, 1, 0, 0 dB. Mute group combo box not in group collapsed. And your mute group is what I discussed earlier. You have four mute groups total. And here's where you choose what mute group you are assigning this channel to. And you actually have a total of 16 options. One. You choose one, two, two, one, plus two. one and two, three. Three. One plus three. One and three. Two plus three. Two and three. One plus two plus three. One and two and three. Four. Four. One plus four. One and four. Two plus four. Two and four. One plus two plus four. One, two, and four. Three plus four. Three and four. One plus three plus four. One, three, and four. Two plus three plus four. Two, three, and four. One plus two plus three plus four. Or all four. Not in group. DCA group combo box, not in group. Now, the next option is DCA groups. And the DCA, you got four of these as well. And you can choose between the same options in which I just shown you in the mute groups. And therefore, you can assign these to DCA. Basically, look at them the same as a subgroup that you can control with one fader. But they only are assigned to the main outputs. Pretty much like another dedicated bus. And yes, it is stereo. Link channels one plus two checkbox not checked. And your channel linking is assigned to each of the channels, each of the 16 channels, and it goes from each odd number to the next even number. So you can only link channels one and two, three and four, five and six, seven, eight, and so on. Active one peers. And we're going to wrap back around to the navigation. navigator tree view. Input one of five, level two. So that's the input section. Gate two of five, level two. The gate. We will go over later on in this video or in a separate video, but this applies to all 16 of the mic input channels. Compressor 3 of 5, level 2. The compressor, as I have mentioned before, is very much the same as the compressors for the main output and bus sends. EQ 4 of 5, level 2. The EQ only difference here from the main output is it is only parametric and it is only four bands. We will overgo this in a video or later in this video. Sense 5 of 5, level 2. Now your sends, as I mentioned earlier, there are 10 in total. You have six bus sends, and you have four effects sends. Now each of these sends has three controls, and we'll check them out real quick. Sense grouping, bus one slider infinity. So you got your slider for each bus, which is the level that goes to that bus from infinity to plus 10, just like any of the other faders. Bus one grouping combo box off collapsed. You're grouping, which means you can group everything that is coming into this bus. Bus one tap point combo box post. And your tap point, which means you can assign what your signal is sending to the bus and from what point in the strip are you tapping into that signal. Now you have input. your choice between input, which means absolutely no change. Pre EQ. Pre EQ, which means gain included. Post EQ. Post EQ, which means your EQ is included. Pre fader. Pre fader, which means anything assigned to that channel or anything done to that channel will come out to this bus, but with the exception of the channel's master fader or the channel's main fader. Post fader. Post fader means the channel's fader is also affecting what is being sent to particular bus. Subgroup. And subgroup means that this bus is essentially, everything that's assigned to this bus is essentially a subgroup. And this applies for all six of the bus sends. Bus two slider infinity, bus two grouping combo, bus two tap, bus three slider infinity, bus three grouping, bus three tap point combo, bus, 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 bus six slider infinity, bus six grouping, bus six tap point combo box post EQ collapse. Now the effect sends are slightly different. FX1 slider infinity. Now you have the same controls FX1 grouping combo box all collapsed. And for the slider and the grouping, FX1 tap point combo box post fader collapsed. point only has up to post fader. You cannot use an effects sim as a subgroup. Input. So input. Pre EQ, post EQ, pre fader, post fader. And that's it. And that is the sims page for all the channel strips. Navigator tree view. Sense 5 of 5, level 2. Level 1 vocals expanded 1 of 17, collapsed. Vocals grouping. Strip name edit selected vocals. I'm going to delete that. Blank. Okay, now it's back to. Navigator tree view. Channel one collapsed one of seven. It's just now channel one again. 
channel two, channel three, channel four, channel five, channel six, channel We're seven. We're going to go to the auxiliary in now because there's a few small changes there that are not in the channel section, or rather that the channel section has that the auxiliary does not. Channel eight, channel nine, channel ten, channel channel twelve collapse, twelve so, seventeen level one. Actually, to make this quicker, I can just hit A on the keyboard. Auxiliary in collapse, and it takes me straight to the one. auxiliary input. So let's check out the main page of the auxiliary input. Auxiliary in grouping. Script color combo box red collapsed. You have the same controls here. Script name edit blank. Auxiliary and uncheck box checked. Solo check box not checked. Send to main check box checked. Auxiliary and fader slider infinity. Auxiliary and output meter edit read only selected infinity. And you same meter. Hand slider center. Enable EQ check box checked. Band one gain slider zero dB. And you'll notice that it skipped the insert compression and gate and went straight to the EQ. And it also skipped the high pass filter frequency. And just went straight to the EQ. Band two gain slider. Band three gain slider. Band four gain slider. Active. One peers. And that is it. That's really the only difference. It just got rid of those few things. Navigator tree view. Expanded. Level two input one of three. And you'll notice it only has an input. EQ two of three level EQ, two. EQ. Sense three of three level and two. And sends. And there is no gate and compression on this, as you as I've mentioned already. EQ two of input one of three level two. So let's check out the input. As you'll notice, there'll probably be quite a few changes here. Input grouping. Input source combo box analog collapsed. You can either choose between your analog and USB just like you can on the channels. USB return source combo box USB 17 plus 18 collapsed. But your USB return is a stereo pair, so you can either do USB 1 plus 2, 1 and 2, USB 3, 3 plus and 4, four USB 5, 5 and 6, 6, USB 7 plus 8. Respectively, all the way up to 17 and 18. USB 17 plus 18. USB trim slider 0 dB. Your trim applies the same. Gain slider 0 dB. But your gain is slightly different. As I mentioned earlier, when I said it was negative 12 to positive 20, that was what this is for. 20 dB. Minus 12 dB. So you can go as low as negative 12. 20 dB. And as high as positive 20. 4 8 dB. 2 dB. 1 0 0 minus 0 0 dB. Auxiliary and left prefader meter edit. Now, selected minus I have minus two separate meters here. One for your left input. Auxiliary and right prefader meter edit. And one for your right input. So that way you can see and keep an eye on the signal coming in individually to each input. Mute group combo box not in group collapsed. Your mute and your DCA groups are here as well. DCA group combo box not in group active one peers. And that is it. Navigator tree view input one of three level And two. that completes the channel strip section of Air Access 18. Level one auxiliary collapsed. Level zero channel strips expanded collapsed. So let's close this up now and we're gonna go on to the effects returns which is essentially four more channels. FX returns collapse 3 of 8 level 0. Now, on the main FX returns page, I have the four effects on switches and faders on this page right here. FX returns grouping. Return 1 on checkbox check. Return 1 fader slider minus 0 0.01 dB. Return 2 on checkbox check. Return 2 fader slider. Return 3 on checkbox check. Return 3 fader slider. Return 4 on checkbox check. Return 4 fader slider minus active. One. Navigator tree. So let's open up the return return channels folder. Expanded. Four level 1 return 1 collapse 1 of four. And there's four items, one for each of the returns. And I will overgo quickly through the functionalities and the controls that each of these has. Return one grouping. Strip color combo box green collapsed. Strip color. Strip name edit blank. Name. Return one on checkbox checked. Your on off ability. Solo checkbox not checked. Your solo. Send to main checkbox checked. The option to send it to mains. Return one fader slider minus 0 0.01. Your fader. Meter. Return one output meter edit read only select. Your output meter. meter. And slider center. Your pan. Enable EQ checkbox checked. And your EQ. Band one gain slider zero. And your four gain for the four bands. Band two gain slide. Band three gains. Band four gain. Active. One peers. Navigator tree view. Re expanded. Three items. You have only three items here. The same three that are available to you on the auxiliary stand. However, these are slightly different. Really not the auxiliary stand, but the auxiliary input. So level two input one of three. Your input is very minimal here, so let's check it out. Input grouping. Input source combo box input collapsed. You can either choose between your input, which means it is returning from whatever is assigned to this, which is generally the effect in the same name. USB. Yeah, USB. Input. USB return source combo box USB one plus two collapsed. Your return source, which is you know obviously stereo pairs one two. USB three plus USB five plus six. Etc. All the way up to seventeen and eighteen. USB one plus two. USB trim slider zero dB. Here's a USB trim, so you can adjust accordingly. Return one prefader meter edit read only selected infinity. And your prefader meter. Mute group combo box not in group collapsed. Your mute group. DCA group combo box not in group collapsed. Your DCA group. group. Active one peers. And that's it. Navigator tree view. Input one of three level two. And that is the input for the effects return channels. EQ two of three level two. Well, the EQ is the exact same as it is for the channel strips, and we will go over that as I've mentioned before. Since three of three level two. And the sins is the exact same as it is in the channel strips. All 10 of the sins are accounted for, the six bus sins and the four effects sins. And that literally 
is it for the effects return section, and that completes all four of the effects returns where they are identical. Level one return one expanded one of four collapsed. Level zero FX returns expanded three of eight. Level one return one collapsed one of four. Level zero collapsed. Bus sends collapsed four of. Next is the bus sends, and just like the effects returns, I have the six bus sends on function and faders available on the main page, so you will see bus sends grouping. Bus one uncheck box checked. Bus one fader slider minus zero point zero one dB. All the way up to bus six. Bus two unchecked. Bus two fader. Bus three. Un bus three. Bus four. Bus four. Bus five. Bus five. Bus six unchecked. Bus six faders active. One peers. Navigator tree view. Bus sends collapsed four of eight level zero. Now there are six pages to the bus sends main page. Expanded. Six items. And each of these six pages for each of the six bus sends. Level one bus one collapsed one of six. And a lot of the controls are the same, so let's just go over through them so you can kind of get an idea of where they're at. Bus one grouping. Strip color combo box yellow collapsed. Strip color. Strip name edit blank. Name. Bus one unchecked box checked. On mute. Solo checkbox not checked. Solo. Send to main checkbox not checked. Sending to mains, which means you can actually send an entire bus send to mains, which is really nice because I can use this bus as a parallel drum compression and send it to the mains, and I actually have that set up before, so yep. Bus one fader slider minus 0 0.01. Now, this is your main bus fader, which is your master bus control, so your master volume. So like if you use it for a monitor, this is how you would send a master volume to the monitor. Auxiliary send one output meter edit read only selected infinity. Now you'll notice that I said auxiliary send one output meter because I have the auxiliary sends meters sends demos primarily or what are assigned to buses by default and what most people would use them for. I have these available to be known right here next to the fader so that way you can be sure that the signal going out of the auxiliary send is not clipping. Very, very appropriate. Pan slider center. And you have your pan control, so when you link a pair of buses together, this is your master pan control for said bus. Enable insert checkbox not checked. And you can enable and insert just like you can on the channel strips. Insert source combo box off collapse. And you have the same options that you do for the channel strips, so you can go all the way up to one side of each of the four effects. FX4R. FX4L. FX3R. FX3 off. FX1L. FX1R off. Enable compressor checkbox not checked. Your compressor is the same as it is on all the channels in the main outputs. Compressor threshold slider 0 dB. And the compressor threshold is the same. Enable EQ checkbox checked. And here's where you can enable or disable the EQ. EQ mode combo box parametric collapsed. And as I mentioned, just like the main output, so you have three modes for your EQ. You got six band parametric or 31 band graphic and 31 band true. Graphic. True. Graph parametric. Active. One peers. And that's it for the main page. Now let's check out the sub pages. Navigator tree view. Bus one collapsed one of six. Level expanded. Four. Level two bus one mix collapsed one of four. Now the mix is where you can look at your entire mix going to this bus, and you can see everything that's going on here. Bus one mix grouping. Bus one fader slider minus zero point zero one dB. So you can see I got the main fader. Auxiliary send one output meter edit read only selected infinity. Your meter. So you can keep an eye on the meter. So when you're working on this monitor mix, say, for example, it is a monitor mix, and you're working with your lead vocalist in this bus, you can keep this page open, and you can go to each of the channels and the effects, and you can get a dialed-in mix, and you don't have to go and navigate through a whole bunch of different pages to do it. Channel 1 slider infinity. And see, these channel faders right here, are the ones that are being assigned to the sends of the channels, not the main channel fader. This is from the sends. So keep that in mind when you're operating this. So whenever I mentioned earlier about the send being either sub, you know, grouped or not, and the tap point in that fader right there, that's what this fader is. I just grouped them all together for ease of access. Channel two slider. Channel three. Sl channel four. Channel five. Channel ch channel eight. Channel ch channel eleven. Channel tw channel thirteen. Channel fourteen. Channel channel six. Auxiliary and slider infinity. Return one slider infinity. And you have your four return faders. And the reason for this is so that way, if you have any effects being returned here, or the effects sends are being assigned to the returns, you can bring the returns into the monitors, and you can give the monitors effects. Return two slider. In return three slider. In return four slider infinity. Active one peers. Navigator tree view. Bus one mix collapsed one of four level two. Now you'll notice that this is collapsed because you can actually expand it. Expanded one items. Level three pan. Bus one plus two. One of one. And it'll be the pan control for said bus. In this case. Pan. Bus one plus two. Grouping. Bus one. Master pan slider center. So there's your master pan for your bus. Channel one. Pan slider center. 
And then you have the panning for all the channels and effects returns. So this is useful. So if you have a pair of buses linked together, say for example, bus one and two as an alternative main output, you can pan using this at those two buses just like you could throughout the main left and right. So this is a very useful thing to have as well. That's why it's right underneath the mix, so it's right there and easy to get to, and all the pans are readily available to you. Navigator tree view, pan, bus one plus two, one of one level three. And this pan applies, the panning applies for all the channels and the returns, just like it does for the mix levels. Level two bus one mix expanded will collapse. Input two of four level two. Now let's check out the input for the buses for there's not a whole lot here to really control, but I want to go ahead and give you guys an overview of what's going on. Input grouping. Bus one prefader meter edit read only selected infinity. All you get is your prefader meter, which means the level of signal coming in. So that way you can go in and adjust accordingly to make sure you're not clipping. Mute group combo box not in group collapsed. Your mute group. DCA group combo box not DCA in group, group. Link bus one plus two checkbox not checked. And your bus linking, and that is it. That's all you have in your input page. Active one peers. Now the bus linking works the same as it does in the channel linking. You can only link an odd number to the very next even number. So bus one and two, three and four, five and six. Navigator tree view. Input two of four level two. So check it out. And next, compressor three of four level two. Compressor, which I mentioned we will go over that later on in this video or in a different video. EQ four of four level two. And the EQ is the same as the main output EQ. And we will go over that in a different video or in later on in this video. Level one bus two collapse two of six. And that applies for all six of the buses because that is all you get in each of the bus. Now we're on bus two. Bus three collapse. Three, bus four collapse. Four, four, bus five collapse. Bus six collapse. Five six, six, level and one. six. Level zero FA. Level one bus six. Bus five. Bus, 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 level two compressed. Level collapsed. Level zero bus sense expanded four of eight. Collapsed. Okay, now let's check out the effects in section. FX sends collapse 5 of 8 level 0. Now the FX sends on the main page, I have it sound like the FX returns where all four of the FX sends on switch and faders are available to you. FX sends grouping. FX1 on checkbox. FX1 fader slider. FX2 on checkbox. FX2 fader slot. FX3 on checkbox. FX3 fader slot. FX4 on checkbox. FX4 faders active. One peer. Navigator tree view. FX sends collapse 5 of 8 level 0. And now that we're back at the root tree, we're going to open the effects pages up and you'll see that there are four. Expanded. Four items. And there's one for each effect. Level one FX send one collapse one of four. FX send one all the way through FX send four. F F FX send four collapse four. F F FX send one collapse one of four level one. And there's not a lot to show here, so let's get through it real quick. <laughs> it's not too bad. Uh, I promise you. <laughs> this is a long video, I know. FX send one grouping. Strip color combo box blue collapsed. So there's your strip color. Strip name edit blank. Your strip name, which has the same application as anywhere else that says FX send, it'll have the name instead. FX one on checkbox checked. Your on, so you can turn it on and off. Solo checkbox not checked. Your solo. FX1 fader slider minus 0.01 dB. This is your fader, so once everything is sent to an effect, you can actually turn up or down the effects master level, so that way you're not sending a clipping signal back to wherever it is you're sending it from. Effect 1 left pre-processing meter edit read only selected infinity. And here's where I did something a little bit different. You have four meters here, left and right pre-processing and left and right post-processing. And the reason I did this is because there are some dual effects where you can send to left or to right. So you can use one effect as a two separate effects. But of course, that depends on what you have selected. So you can check the level of both respectively to make sure the signal going in or coming out is not clipping. Effect one right pre-processing meter edit read only selected. Effect one left post-processing meter edit. Effect one right post-processing meter edit read only selected infinity. FX selection combo box vintage room collapse. Now here's where you can select between one of 61 available effects on all four slots. So there's several different chorus reverbs and delays and compressors and oh goodness, this just could go on forever. <laughs> FX routing combo box return collapsed. Now here's where you can choose where the effect is being routed to. You can send it to the return insert, or you can send it to the insert return. So when I say send it to the insert, that means it's available as a side chain, but it is most commonly known as insert and not side chain. Hence the reason it's labeled as an insert. Mute group combo box not in your group mute group DCA group and combo DCA box not in group groups are just the same as they've always been. Active one peers. And now we're going to go back to the tree. Navigator tree view. Expanded, one items. Level two parameters, one of one. The only other page you get is parameters, and the parameters change depending on the effects selected. Let me give you a quick explanation of this. Parameters grouping. FX selection combo box vintage room collapsed. So you see I got vintage room selected. 
Reverb delay slider 20 milliseconds. And you'll go through all the parameters for the vintage room. Decay slider 1.943, size slider 24, density slider 30. Yar level slider 22%, level slider 0 dB, low multiply slider 1.0, high multiply slider 0 0.69, low cut slider 96.7, high cut slider 10.5 kHz, yar left slider 28 milliseconds, yar right slider 34 milliseconds, freeze combo box off collapsed, active, one peers, navigator tree view, parameters grouping, FX selection combo box vintage room collapsed. Now say I change it. FX, FX selection combo box reverse reverb collapsed, F, FX selection combo box rhythm delay collapsed. I'm going to try and just delay here. Time slider 200 milliseconds. You got, so you notice the parameters change. Game base slider 100%. Feedback slider 30%, low cut slider 10 hertz, high cut slider 20 kHz, spread slider 5, factor A combo box 4 slash 3 collapsed, gain A slider 50%, factor B combo box 1 collapsed, gain B slider 50%, factor C combo box 3 slash 2 collapsed, gain C slider 50%, cross feed combo box off collapsed, mono combo box off collapsed, dry combo box off collapsed, active, 1 peers, navigator, parameters grouping, FX selection com FX selection combo box 3 tap delay collapsed, FX selection combo box stereo delay collapsed, FX selection combo box reverse reverb collapsed, F FX selection combo box rhythm delay collapsed, FX selection combo box stereo chorus collapsed. Speed slider 0 0.477 hertz. Depth L slider 20%. Depth R slider 20%. But you see what I'm getting at. Navigator tree view. Parameters 1 of 1 level 2. Level 1 FX send 1 expanded 1 collapsed. And that's the same for all four of the effects sends. And this completes the effects send section of Air Access 18. Level 0 FX sends expanded 5 of 8 collapsed. DCA groups collapsed 6 of 8 levels. Next zero. is DCA groups, and this is a very simplified area. I have the DCA groups on and faders available to you on the main page, just like I do with the effects sends. DCA groups grouping. DCA1 unchecked box checked. DCA1 fader slider. DCA2 unchecked box. DCA2 fader slider. DCA3 unchecked box. DCA3 fader slider. DCA4 unchecked box checked. DCA4 fader slider. Active. One peers. Navigator tree view. DCA groups collapsed 6 of 8 level 0. Expanding this will give me the four DCA pages. Expanded. Four items. Level 1 DCA1 one, 1 of 4. And there's not much on these DCA pages. There's actually very little. In fact, there's not even any sub pages. DCA one grouping. DCA color combo box off two collapsed. You got your color. DCA name edit blank. Your name. DCA one unchecked box checked. Your on. DCA one prefader meter edit read only selected infinity. Your prefader meter so you can see how much is coming in. DCA one fader slider minus 0 0.01 dB. And your fader, and that's it. Active one peers. Navigator tree view. DCA one one of four level one. And that's the same for all four of the DCA group pages. And this completes the DCA section of Air Access 18. Level 0 DCA group 6 collapsed. Rooting collapsed 7 of 8 level 0. This is where you can control several different things. So I will try to make this very simple. Now on the main page of routing, you have the routing controls for your main output and your headphones output. Rooting grouping. Main outputs combo box main LR collapsed. So your main output is your main left and right by default. And you have, you can choose between that. Monitor. Monitor. USB 1 plus 2. USB 1 and 2. USB 3 plus 4. 3, 4. USB 5 plus 6. USB 7 plus, USB 9 plus, USB 17 plus 18. All the way up to USB 17 and 18. Main LR. So let's go back to main left, right. Headphones combo box monitor collapsed. And your headphones is assigned to monitor, which means whenever you're, you're doing anything with the solo section, it will be going to the headphones. But of course you can control that. So main be, LR. Monitor. Uh, USB 1 plus 2. And the same same options as your uh, main output. Main LR. Monitor. But of course, it's by default assigned to monitor. Active. One peers. And that's it for the... Navigator tree view. Routing collapse 7 of 8 level 0. The routing's main page. So let's open this up. Expanded. Three items. There's three items. The first page... Level 1 auxiliary sense collapsed 1 of 3. Is the auxiliary sense, which is the six auxiliary sense on the XR18 or X18. And you can assign what is being sent to them. Auxiliary sense grouping. Auxiliary send one combo box bus one collapsed. As by default, they have the six buses ascend to the six auxiliary sends respectively. But you have a lot of options here. Channel one. You can go as much, you know, the channels. Channel two, channel three, channel four, channel five, channel six, channel seven, channel 16, auxiliary and L. Auxiliary and left. Auxiliary and R. Auxiliary right. FX1 L. FX1. Bus two, bus one, FX4 R. All the way up to FX4 right. Bus one. Bus one. Bus, 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 bus six. Effect one. Effect one. Effect two. two effect three. three effect four. four. Main L. Main left. Main, R. main right. USB one. USB one. USB eighteen. All the way up to USB eighteen. USB not main R. Bus three. Bus bus one. And it's like that for all six of the auxiliary sends. Auxiliary send two combo box. Auxiliary send three combo box. Auxiliary send four combo box. Bus four collapse. Auxiliary send five combo box. Bus five collapse. Auxiliary send six combo box. Bus six collapse. Active one peers. Navigator tree view. Auxiliary sends collapse one of three level one. Now you notice that it's collapsed. Now if I expand the auxiliary send section. Expanded. One items. Level two. Auxiliary send tap points one of one. 
you have the tap points for the six auxiliary sends, which means how is the signal being sent to the auxiliary? Auxiliary send tap points grouping. Auxiliary send one tap point combo box post fader collapsed. And let's go to the options you have here. Analog. Analog plus mute. Input. Input plus mute. Pre EQ. Pre EQ plus mute. Post EQ. Post EQ plus mute. Pre fader. Pre fader plus mute. Post fader. And this all applies pretty much the same as it does for the sending from the channels, with the exception of the fact that the plus mute, which means that if it is muted, then it is muted through the send as well. So whatever you have assigned to the auxiliary send is being manipulated. And this applies for all six of the auxiliary sends. Auxiliary send two, auxiliary send three, auxiliary send four, auxiliary send five, auxiliary send six, active, navigator, auxiliary send tap points, navigator tree view, auxiliary, navigator tree view, auxiliary send tap points one of one level two, level one auxiliary collapsed. Next is the USB sends. USB sends collapsed two of three level one. And there are 18 total USB sends, and you have all the same options as you do for the auxiliary sends with the exception of the USB returns 1 through 18. USB sense grouping. USB 1 combo box channel 1 collapsed. It's just as far as... Channel 10. Main R. Main right. That's it. Main L. Effect 4. Effect 3. Effect 2. Effect 1. Bus 6. Bus 5. Bus 4. Bus 3. Bus 2. Bus 1. FX4. FX4. FX3R. FX3. FX2R. FX2L. Channel 1. Channel 2. Channel 3. Channel 4. Channel 5. Channel 6. Channel 7. Channel 1. And it's like that for all 18. Except for 17 and 18. Navi USB sense grouping. USB 18 combo box auxiliary and R collapsed. USB 17 combo box auxiliary and L collapsed. By default. Navigator tree view. USB sense expanded. Level 2. USB sense tap points 1 of 1. And you have the 18 USB sense tap points here. And all the tap points have the same options as you do for the auxiliary sends. In fact, all the tap points have the same options for all the options in routing. So you got... USB send one. USB send tap points grouping. USB one tap point combo box analog collapsed. All the way up to USB eighteen. Navigate active. USB send tap points grouping. USB eighteen tap point combo box analog collapsed. USB seventeen. USB sixteen. USB fifteen tap. U, 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 navigator tree. USB send tap. USB two tap. USB three tap. USB four tap. Navigator tree view. Level one USB collapsed. And last you have Ultranet. Ultranet collapsed three of three level one. Now, Ultranet uses the Ultranet port on the top of the box for the XR18 to allow you to hook up the P16Ms, and you can send whatever you desire through the Ultranet to the P16Ms so they can control their own mix with whatever signals you decide to send them. And by default, you're going through the 16 channels because there's only 16 Ultranet sends. Ultranet grouping. Ultranet 1 combo box channel 1 collapsed. Ultranet 2 combo box channel 2 collapsed. So you got, by default, the same options as you do for the auxiliary sends. Ultranet 1 combo box channel 1 collapsed. USB 18. Channel 1. Channel 2. Channel 3. Channel 4. Channel 5. Channel 6. Channel 7. Channel 8. Channel 9. Channel 10. Channel 11. Etc. And it goes all the way through the whole list. Channel 1. The next thing is... Navigator tree view. Expanded. 1 items. Level 2, alternate tap points 1 of 1. The alternate tap points, which are the same exact options as listed above for the auxiliary sense and the USB. And this completes the routing section of Air Access 18. Level 1, alt, collapsed. Level 0, routing expanded 7 of, collapsed. Now the last section is a very small section. It is the configuration. Configure collapsed 8 of 8, level 0. And configuring, you really only have two sections. You have the linking options and you have the solo options. Now, the linking options, there's only four, and that's what you're first going to see when you come to configuring. Configure grouping. Link paired preamps combo box uncollapsed. Linking paired preamps. Link paired EQS combo box uncollapsed. Paired EQs. Link paired compressors combo box uncollapsed. Compressors. Link paired mutes combo box uncollapsed. And mutes. Now, by default, these are on, and what these basically do is if you link any channels or buses together, with these functions being on, if you make any control changes on one channel or bus, it'll affect the paired bus or channel as well. So, for example, if I turn up the preamp or the gain on channel one and it is linked with channel two, it will control the gain on channel two as well. However, if I have preamp linking turned off, if I just control the gain on channel one, channel two's gain will re remain untouched. And the same applies for the EQs, compressors, and the mutes. And that's what these are for.
Active, one peers. Navigator tree view. Configure collapse state of eight level zero. Expanded, one items. Level one solo, one of one. So let's check out the solo configuration section. It's a very simple. Solo grouping. Signal mix combo box stereo collapsed. This is where you can choose to have your signal be stereo or mono coming out of the headphones. Mute output combo box off collapsed. Your mute is off, obviously. You can mute or unmute the signal coming out of the headphones. Level slider plus zero dB. And this is where you can adjust the level that's coming out of the headphones, your primary level. Source combo box LRAFL collapsed. And this is where you can adjust the source that comes out of your headphones when something is not soloed. LRPFL. And you have, off. you can turn it off. LR. Left and right. LRPFL. Pre-fader. LRAFL. After fader. Auxiliary. Auxiliary. USB 17 plus 18. USB 17 and 18. Bus 1. Bus 1. Bus 2. Bus 3. Bus 4. Bus 5. Bus 6. Bus 1 plus 2. Bus 3 plus 4. Bus 5 plus 6. And that's all you got. USB 17 plus 18. Off. LRAFL. By default, it sets a left and right after fader. Source trim slider 0 dB. Your source trim, which means if you need to get a little bit of extra thump to your source coming in, you can adjust the trim here. So this will be useful, say, if you have a bus in that's not coming into the headphones loud enough, you can turn it up a little bit, or if it's too loud, you can back it off. And you have a total of negative 18 to positive 18 on the trim. Minus 18 dB, 18 dB. 7, 6, 6, 5, 5, 4, 4, 3, 3, 12, 11, 11, 10, 3.5, 2.2 dB, 1.1 dB, 0.0 dB. Channel mode combo box BFL collapsed. You got your channel mode and your bus mode, both. Bus mode combo box BFL collapsed. It can be considered PFL, which is pre-fader. AFL. Or after fader, AFL. And this means whatever you solo, if it's PFL, you're soloing everything prior to the main fader of that channel or bus. And after fader means the fader is included. PFL. So if the fader's down, the signal's down. Dimming combo box off collapsed. Now this enables or disables the dimming, which for some reason, I don't know why this is even here because we would never use it. Um, because if you dim it, you dim it down a little bit, whether it's muted or not, you know, for the signal that is not soloed. Dim level slider minus 20. And you got your dim level slider, which means this is how low the dimming is actually going to be once it's applied and it goes from zero to minus 40 zero being as high up as it'll go which means no dimming whatsoever pfl dimming combo box off collapsed and your pfl dimming which is the dimming of if you have something that is soloed and it comes in you can dim this or not so that way i guess it's for understanding a signal separation so it kind of makes sense in a way too now that i think about it <laughs> And ladies and gentlemen, Active. One peers. that is it. Navigator tree view. That, com Solo one of one level one. that completes the configuration section of Air Access 18. This concludes the general overview of Air Access 18. I hope you guys have found this video to be rather informative. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for your time. Again, my name is Jared, and I will see you on the next video. Take care. Peace.